Hello, this is Bunting, and today I'm covering my style, sound design, and arrangement. Let's go. So the first thing you need to do a my style track, you need a Twitter account, right? And on this Twitter account, just like literally any thought that comes up to your head, um, mm, Taki, Taki Bell, just just post it. All right. Okay. So once you've done that, you're about ready to start laying down chords and all that kind of stuff, right? So the first thing I did in this arrangement, first I'll go over how I made it, how I arranged it. Then I'll get to the juicy bass sounds, just so you don't feel like I'm ripping you off, not showing you the juicy bass, right? Okay, so this thing right here, right, this pad, it's a saw wave, right? And also, what? I have a new song. Link in description. Okay, done wasting your time. It's a saw wave. A lot of his stuff is a saw wave, right? For both his melodic and um, especially his bass elements, right? So let's initialize the preset. Now, first of all, I just wrote these chords out. It's a lovely chord progression. Learn music theory on YouTube. That's the way to do it. But to get these chords a little thicker, a little more stereo, you want to introduce some unison voices. Like four or five is good. You can go all the way up to like 16. But the lower, the better for your CPU, right? And I turned down the detune a bit. You can mess with different detune amount and like detune percent, all that jazz. Now to get it thicker, I'm going to layer another layer except an octave down. So on this pitch, hold shift, drag it down, minus 12, right? And it's a beautiful, thick, super soft, right? But to make it a beautiful, thick, luscious pad, all I really need to do is add a filter. Mess with your cutoff. I prefer no resonance. And it's lovely. You know, you can add a multiband before that. Make it a little crisper harmonically. And a reverb after that. And it's just, it's luscious. You could one out of a pad, right? Now, something I notice him doing, and a lot of producers doing, it's just freaking awesome, is grain delay. So with the grain delay, it sounds like this. You hear all that? Or like this. You hear all those like little tinklies, the little sparkles up top? That's because grain delay, it's like a delay, except you can do weird stuff with the pitch and delay times, right? So here's our default grain delay. We don't want it 100% dry wet or else we're only getting the delayed signal. We want like 50, 40 or so. A bit of feedback so it actually rings out. You hear that? It's beautiful, right? Now this pitch. So if you turn it up like a tiny bit, Pitches up a tiny bit. Turn it up a lot of bit. Pitches up a lot of bit. All the way up to an octave, right? But it sounds kind of gross now, so we turn our frequency down. Cool. Now it sounds much cleaner and sparkly and beautiful. You can also change the time. You can even do this. Do all sorts of stuff and change the spray to like kind of randomize the delay times. Yeah, and it's wonderful, and also I just like to scoop out some of the mids right with this kind of thing here, just so it sounds a little cleaner in the mix. Right, okay, now freezing this so my computer doesn't lag, and moving on after this break. Okay, the track is frozen, we're back. Now the next thing I did, with this same lovely chord MIDI that I put out by ear, I duplicated it and threw on an arpeggiator, right? Okay, but I change up the sound design, as you can probably hear, right? If you hear any of these bell-like sounds, a lot of the times they're just sine waves, right? Everything's a sine wave, you know this. But to get this kind of plucky bell effect, I turn my decay down. This is, this is shaping the volume, by the way. Sustain down, and a bit of release. Release kind of makes it ring out at the end. And it's just beautiful. There's a bit of unison on it, but honestly, you don't need it. In fact, I prefer it without it and just threw some reverb on that, right? 
Okay, and it's a beautiful bell. Very simple, but very effective. Now for this arpeggiator. Now, arpeggiator is super underrated and awesome. I mean, call it underrated. I don't see a lot of people using it. But it takes a chord and just plays the notes individually. You can change the rhythms. I like this triplet rhythm. 112, 12 or whatever. Style, you can change the groove. Now it's swung. I like straight. You can change the style of this. It plays it in a different order. You can play it random even. But I like thumb up because it keeps hitting that bottom note repeatedly, which I think gives it a nice kind of groove and beauty and all that jazz. And together, it sounds lovely. It sounds amazing. The next thing is this bell here. This is pretty much the same exact patch, except just with delay on it, right? And also, a little different melody. Okay, now for this talky bass, right? Which is this. Okay. You'll hear this kind of talking effect on a lot of his basses. I mean, you hear it over here. Which I'll get to. Be patient, okay? Calm down, calm down, relax. Okay? But anyways, this is just your basic Reese with a bit of spice on it, you know? We like a bit of spice here. Keep it unique, keep it interesting. Now, how does one make a basic Reese? It's just a saw with, like everything else in this tutorial. Let's layer two on an octave above you. Get as low as you can and detune it, just like our chord. And that's what we're going to do now. We'll do all the sorts of stuff. But it's a little beefy now, but we can calm them down, like make them relax, get a little filter with the resonance down. Now that's a Reese, right? A bit of compression for it. Why not, right? Okay. Another thing I did here was get some volume, volume automation on the level with this LFO. I want to sit though, and just a subtle amount, so. And how about slower? Just for some extra movement, because why not? I think I heard that in some of his tracks, you know? Who knows? Anyways, nobody else is doing a tutorial on this. You're stuck with me, whether I'm wrong or not, so haha. Now for the talkingness, right? If you want the bass to talk, get some EQ peaks. In fact, turn up the resonance a bit and you're even better off. Now it goes wow, wow, wow. But how do we get that thing to jump around like an alien computer from another dimension? With an LFO, right? But now it's wow, wow, wowing. We want it to jump, okay? And that's what we make steps for. We're going to shape it in steps. So click this little thing here, step. Click the paintbrush, now we paint steps. What the heck? This is crazy. Somebody, like, somebody stop me, honestly. Change the rate, change the shape of it. It's beautiful. You hear this kind of effect in a lot of his sound design. And it's freaking cool. I don't blame him for using it all the time. Riser there. But that's about all the sound design here. I'll go over the drums quickly. You hear a lot of cool percussion stuff, right? I mean, this is the way I would go about adding cool percussion. I would literally just steal loops. They're here, they're meant to be stolen. You know, even better if you pirate them illegally, you know? Just get a cool loop. Let's let's like cymatic because they have weird stuff in their loops. And just pick out the cool parts of their loops, right? See, I like that little click. So how about I just go like... I like that, you know? Just chop up little loops, get cool stuff out of it. Now we're in business. But I just stuck with this loop. And also got another cymatic loop. And reversed it. I chopped a little bit out, reversed it, and faded it. Pressing A to turn off automation so you can see these fades. Yeah, and it sounds beautiful and amazing. Okay, now these drums, these huge drums, just listen how big they are. You know where you can get them? At buntingmusic.com, along with some other great preset sample packs. It's just amazing. And I even have merch now. Wow, who would have thought? Anyways.
This is just a snare and a clap layered reverb on the clap just to make it huge. And all together with a little hat loop. I chose the hat loop because he seems to use them rather than just straight hats because it creates that kind of like acoustic -y feel, you know, or you can just add a bunch of reverb to hats and get a similar effect. Okay, now the part you've been waiting for, the infamous Mize bass. If you've been paying attention, you know everything ever in this tutorial is a saw wave. And you'd be right, because this is a saw wave. And we're using a similar trick, right? For one, we got some phaser action jumping around going crazy. We even have some low pass action all using the stepper. But even here, taking out this EQ8 and getting a peek, making that boy move. You know, this boy is talking on so many levels. I wonder what he's trying to say. I don't speak alien bass, but if we got a translator, please hit my DM. But as you see, just filter, get a phaser positive. Just use our same trick, get a step, just paint it in. I literally did this randomly. You can do it much more precise than I did to your liking. And mess with the frequency, you know, throw it on different high resonance filters, like here, and we got this low pass filter. The low pass filter makes it. This is cool, but not as, not as like much movement, I would say. But with the low pass, golly, we're in business. And of course, multiband, and yeah. Now, a quick note for just building drops and stuff. I typically start off with kind of a main riff, right, which I draw out with whatever first thing I put down and then split it up between parts and add fills in between stuff so here's a fill right kind of a fill and also I interplay it with the drums we see we have the same kind of wheel 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 talking peak effect right just the frequency being automated on the EQ right but for some extra talking for one I put this saw in a di different octave different different octave right for some contrast and also, took this normal low pass filter, dragged it to the middle to make it a band pass, only the mid frequencies going through, and made it steeper. I like it steeper. You can use the less steep one, the 12 decibel. But I find 24 decibel just cleaner, squelchier, more beautiful. Right? And I just draw all this in with my favorite shape ever, like ramps. Because it's all about ramps, we're doing saw waves, okay? Okay, now for this kind of thing, there's supposed to be delay on this. Ping pong delay, sounds awesome. Same squelchy effect, except this is kind of greater than I thought. You see, even after the bass is done playing, it's still echoing. But this awesome peak is still giving it movement. Tell me that's not the trippiest thing you've heard today. Right? But to add some variation to these saw waves, you can use not just one saw wave, but two, right? And get some FM. FM, right? Level down. Mess with, mess with this, mess with the pitch of this. And you get a bunch of different results, a bunch of cool stuff. And I also use for this, just another bandpass filter, just like the last bass. Except of course, delayed it. Different pitching going on. So as you can probably tell, can you guess what this bass is? Can you guess what kind of waveform, what kind of stuff is going on in here? If you did, good job. It's another saw wave, right? This time I messed with this phaser a bit differently. Drew in a pretty little shape on it. Did a bit of pitch bend. Did a bit of chorus work. A tiny bit of chorus makes it super wide and cool. Like look, it's chorus. Chorus is huge, bro with, of course, multi-band. This is doing nothing, this is doing nothing. Just left over from the patch of the duplicator. Actually, this is doing something. It's automating the volume, you know, because on top of all this crazy filter and pitch bending, you can mess with the volume too to give it some flow and extra variation, you know? Like, even though these are all, like, bases based on a similar kind of principle, saw waves messing with filters, EQ, high resonance stuff, right? You see, I even have two going on here. Filting around, giving it crazy movement, right? But you see, you get some nice variation in it. And they all play together very nicely because they have a similar tone. You know, it's all different instruments, but 
they're just wonderful. It's like you got a tuba, then you got a trombone. They're all in the brass family. You know, this is all in the squelchy saw family, okay? And everyone's happy in this family, okay? Everyone's happy. Okay. But really, that about covers it for the my stuff, you know? He uses these style basses in a lot of stuff. Of course, he ventures out sometimes, but I would say as much as you hear these, kind of his signature sound. But... If you want this project file and these presets, you can support me on Patreon. Link is in the description. If you want my samples and all that, I have a website, you know. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. It looks like this, right? And leave a comment. You can give me suggestions. You can ask questions, all that jazz. I'm happy to read, answer, and make videos on your comments, you know. It's all that jazz. Also, subscribe if you want to see more of this. Hit the bell, too, so you get notified, because that helps everyone out, both me and you. Also... Just spitting everything out here, uh, Discord. If you want to join a Discord and be another, being with other producers like me and chat with me and all these other lovely people, links also in the description, okay? Now, I've talked so much at the end of this video, I can't possibly say anything more besides stay creative, stay woke. Peace out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support, guys. Love you.